Um, so we're looking at how standard deviation and, and uh, works in the, the calculus problem. We have this probability density function, 1 over 2 root x, and we want to find the standard deviation. Now the formula for standard deviation involves the mean. So in a previous video, we found that the mean was 37 over 3. So um, what, the, what the standard deviation is, is a measurement of spread. And so the way it works is it finds the likelihood, or basically it, it looks at the difference between the observation and the mean, like how far off you are from the mean. And um, what it does is it squares that, because you can be below the mean, you can be above the mean for your value of x. And so it squares that, but in squaring that, you have the wrong units. If you have centimeters for your units, when you go to square here, it says centimeter squared. Um, this calculation here is called the variance, but it, its units are off. And so the standard deviation is a better measurement of spread, and it is just the square root of the variance. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So we go and calculate this integral, but then we take the square root. Okay, so um, let's set it up. It's supposed to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity, but this function is only alive between 9 and 16. Before 9, the function is 0. After 16, the function is 0, and between 9 and 16, the function becomes 1 over 2 root x. And so, the integral from minus infinity to infinity then will degenerate to be just the integral from 9 to 16. The problem with this is that our mean being 37 over 3 just causes uh, much more trouble than it should with the fractions. So we have 1 over 2 root x is the, um, the PDF, that, that's here, the function f of x. And we take x minus the mean and square it, and we integrate from 9 to 16. Okay, let's work out what that would be. If we take x minus 37 over 3 and multiply it by x minus 37 over 3, um, what we get out is x squared, then we get two of those 37 over 3's times x, and then we get plus the uh, 37 squared, let's call it over 9, we'll go ahead and square the 3. Alright, um, this half here, let's go ahead and pull that out. And so we're looking at 1 half times the integral from 9 to 16 of... We have x squared. Let's go ahead and double here and call this 74 over 3 times x. And then let's just leave this as uh, 37 squared over 9. But don't forget, though, this gets multiplied by the PDF of 1 over root x. We pulled the half out. So we distribute the 1 over root x across. And then we're just integrating using the power rule in reverse. And so we're looking at um, x squared over root x. And you subtract the exponents. 2 minus a half is 3 halves. Um, x over root x is just root x. Or x to the half. All right, so here we go. We need to integrate. Um, from 9 to 16 and then take a half. When we distribute, we get x to the 3 halves and we keep this 74 over 3 times x to the half and then we add on 37 squared over 9 times x to the negative 1 half. Okay, so we integrate and we get uh, x to the 5 halves times 2 fifths. Keep the 74 over 3, it's negative, and get x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. Keep the 37 squared over 9 
and you get x to the one half when you add one here, but divided by a half. So we'll times by two. And we need to evaluate this from nine uh, up to sixteen. Okay. Well, um, 16 to the 5 halves is just 4 to the 5th. And that is uh, the same as uh, 2 to the 10th, which is a number that um, usually gets memorized because it is computer-based. Um, 1024. Uh, 16 to the 3 halves, for the same reason, would be 4 cubed which is 64. 9 to the 5 halves, for the same kind of reasoning, is 3 to the 5th. That's um, 3 times 81, or 243. And 9 to the 3 halves is uh, uh, 3 cubed, which is 27. So these numbers will get plugged in. We end up with a half Okay, so we have two-fifths of 16 to the 5 halves, which is uh, 1024. We have this uh, 74 over 3. Oh, no, let's call it, oh, you know what, let's double it. Um, um, 74 times 2 is, uh, yeah, let's call it 148 over 9. Okay, and then that's uh, x to the 3 halves, which is uh, 64. And then 37 squared over 9, um, oh, 8 times 2. And then uh, x to the 1 half is just a 4. That's my upper limit. My lower limit, I get 2 fifths. Um, 9 to the 5 halves, we said, was... 243, 148 over 9, um, um, 9 to the 3 halves we said it was 27, <laughs> and then uh, 37 squared over 9, um, and then the 2 is there also, and then 9 to the 1 half is a 3. Okay, great. So we have um, two fifths of ten twenty four, one forty eight over nine of sixty four, and then uh, thirty seven squared, basically um, over nine times eight. Um, then we're going to distribute this negative across. Okay, so we'll have minus two-fifths of 243 plus 148 over 9 times 27 minus 37 squared over 9 times 6. And then putting together terms that are alike, we have um, factor out the two fifths. We'll have 1024 minus 243. Factor out the 148 over 9. Uh, if I take it out as a negative, I just have to be careful. I'll have the 64. But then, because this is a plus, I'll have minus 27. Is that okay? And then, uh, for this guy here, this 37 squared over 9, let's call it um, 37 squared. And what you're looking at is, uh, after that, you have uh, 8 ninths, and you're going to take away 6 ninths. Okay, so we have a half
Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, 1024 minus 243, that is uh, 781. So, two-fifths of 781 minus 148 over 9. And when you subtract here, you get 37. 37? Yeah, 37. And then um, you get your uh, 37 squared, and then this is uh, 2 ninths when you subtract the fractions. At, at some point, I mean, it's, it's unreasonable for, for you to have to work this out. Um, but, you know, at, at some point, you probably should go to a calculator. I mean, um, I, I, would, I probably would have, you know, gone a lot earlier. But I wanted to show you that you can work it out by hand um, up to a certain point. Um, here, I, I would go to a calculator. I mean, this is unreasonable. Um, at this point, um, I feel. And so we'll go to a calculator and find out what that value is. Um, we'll go to Wolfram Alpha, and when you plug it in, it turns out to be 184 over 45 or 4.08 repeating. So, um, so that's what we'll go with 4.08 repeating or 184. 184 over 45. 184 over 45. Or 4.08 repeating. The 8 is repeating. And that number is your standard deviation. I think it's 4 and 4 40 fifths. <laughs> So, so then um, that answers uh, part B. For part C, we can answer that quickly here. It says, uh, find a probability that a petal selected at random has a length of more, more than uh, three standard deviations above the mean. Okay, you take the mean, which was 12 and a third, and you add on three standard deviations. This number here, I mean, is going to be something more than 24. It's somewhere between 24 and 25. And you want to be more than that. You want your, you want x to be more than that. You want the probability that x is more than that. So let's just go ahead and say, let's just for simplicity, let's go ahead and say, what's the chance that x is more than 24? But think about the way you do this calculation of probability, you integrate. And if you want to know the chance that x is more than 24, you're going to integrate from 24 up to infinity. Integrate what? The, the PDF, the probability density function. But remember our function, it only is alive between 9 and 16. If you go past 16, the function is 0. It's also 0 before 9. So if I'm integrating from 24 to, to infinity, yeah, 24 is further down the line. So it's the function is 0. You're integrating 0 at that point. And that's why there's no chance at all that you can be more than three standard deviations above the mean. You can't even be more than one standard deviation above the mean if the mean is um, here at, at, at 12 and a third. Then if you add 4.08 repeating to that, you're already past the mean. I mean, you're past 16. And you're into this zero realm of where the function is just dead. And so that answers parts B and C.